Okay, so uh, for today's demo, we're going to go over uh, blocking out hard body stuff like um, like these organic forms and getting a, getting a really simple block out going so you'll have something to uh, to work with in the long run and uh, how to start quickly and efficiently and uh, make big decisions really early on so that you'll, you'll be able to uh, move confidently into the detail phase without... Um, uh, Without losing, uh, without losing, losing track of where you're going and uh, where you need to be. So first things first is to find good reference, as always. Um, so I'm, I'm going to make a, a block out of this Plymouth Barracuda real quick. Um, so it's just a plain, plain old muscle car. And then finding, finding good reference from the front and the side. Now, um, things to think about when you're, when you're considering reference is that unless it's a blueprint, you're gonna, you're gonna have a lot of distortion. So with, especially with like these front images. Uh, there tends to be a fisheye effect, so you need to take into consideration that even though this line is receding, or appears to be receding and the car appears to be getting thinner, that's just the natural forces of perspective working because of the, the, the nature of cameras. So if you can find reference of, um, of hand-drawn blueprints or, um, really, or orthographic drawings, then that is the ideal reference for this kind of procedure. But... Um, but you can you can work from photo reference. Just keep that in mind when you're when you're making your decisions, and have lots of images on hand that show that yes, in fact, the car is um, the same about the same width all the way back, um, and so on and so forth. So first things first, um, we're going to work in uh, what's called uh, plane modeling, as opposed to box modeling. So with the plane modeling, um, what you do is you make the uh, just a second. All right, so with plane modeling, what you're going to do is you're going to outline the silhouette of a car in a plane or whatever object you're making in a plane because you know that it is about the same silhouette all the way across the car. Now, it does bend towards the edges, and you'll account for that later with bevels and chamfers and such. Um, but for the most part, the car is um, from the side, all one silhouette all the way across. So we're going to make that silhouette, duplicate it across, and bridge it, and that will give us essentially like a wood block cut of the side of the car that we can then um, dremel into and, and uh, really uh, nail down the shape. So we're going to work from the side, mostly, um, and we're going to start with a plane. We're going to keep this plane very simple because in this sort of situation, simple is key. Because if you start getting uh, too, many, too many edges, too many vertices too early, you're going to have a really um, soft shape that doesn't quite, it's, uh, then you're going to get bends and things that aren't representative of, uh, of what you need. So start with one and one, really, because um, that's, that's, that's just where you need to start. So I'm going to zoom, I'm going to have uh, multiple windows open at, at the same time because um, I, I need to have this, uh, this isometric reference. So um, the perspective warp of working in um, in 3D doesn't doesn't affect the final product. So I'll actually switch over here to work down here on, in this case. So I'll switch to vertex mode. And I'm just going to match the rough shape of the big shapes of the car. So in this case, um, the furthest point of the car is about here. I'm just saying, over here. It's about here. And then over here. Into here. And put it down. Now, what we have here is just um, yeah. So the car is about this shape. If you if you don't count if 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 you drop down the the level of detail of the car to its absolute bare minimum, this is the basic silhouette of the car. And now we're going to make it more complicated from here. But this gives us a basic outline and a, and a shape that we know adheres to the silhouette of the car. And from here, we're just going to um, Add, add edge loops where necessary, but um, we're going to keep it keep it as simple as possible for as long as possible. Connect. So even with one more edge, we can we can add a lot more detail. So we're going to go back to vertex mode and pull that over here. Because right now what we're working with is we need. We just need to work on the uh, the lower body of the car, 
because the upper body of the car will basically be an extrusion that comes when we connect when we make this this flowing form of the of the car body is is more of the form that we need to be uh, be concerned about because um, if you look at if you look at cars um, they have you'll see these these interesting lines on them even though the line hasn't been painted into the car it's um, it's because um, automotive automotive engineers what they do is they design how the car reflects the environment because well, a car is a solid color most in most cases a car is a solid color uh, it's a shiny uh, painted exterior so you're not going to have a lot of a lot of room for interesting detail and, and for aerodynamics sake you don't want a lot of cuts in the car you don't want a lot of weird divots or, or curves so what you what you want is these really interesting lines that follow the length of the car without actually being in the car so what we want to do is reflect that in the geometry so when we go to the wireframe we should have lines that follow the length of the car and reflect that that um, that color information so like, especially in, in we can see it really nicely in this image like there's a there's a clear plane change right right along here where the car's geometry follows a line that goes all the way through the car and we can see where the door bows that it stops there and, and, and starts going back in stops there keeps it starts going back in so we want the geometry to reflect the uh, this natural shape of the car and they've, they've done a lot of our work for us with um with these reference photos anyhow but we're going to keep working on in very simple forms and we're going to keep our geometry as straight as possible for as long as possible so i'm going to keep this lined up vertically um, when i add new geometry i'm going to be um, working in straight lines and doing vertical cuts so that when i when i go to add horizontal cuts i'll have a nice grid that i can arrange in the shape of these uh, the car's reflections Right there, and then back to edge mode. Connect. Back to burnt mode. And it's just push and pull from here. So just pay attention to where where your vertices need to be. Pay attention to how to support the car's silhouette, and uh, you'll be on your way. So, um, just for the sake of time, um, I'll, I'll update you with um, with more once this car's further along. But the but the grand I, the grand scheme here is to take this object and drag it out and set it set it here, and then grab these faces and extrude them. To the width of the car, as we see here. So it's not going to be perfect on the first at the first on the first go. But what we have now is we have working points and a grid along the car. So when we grab our vertices down here, we can we can then move them and start to and start to align the car from this angle. So we've already done good hard grid work on the on the side of the car. We'll have plenty of tools to work with the car and bring it back into shape on this end. And if we line up our reference correctly, we should have a consistent a consistent scale between the front view and the side view. With lots of other reference, um, you should be in a, in a good spot. All right, back to recording. So I've gotten a little further on the model, and I've changed out my reference for a more uh, more accurate orthographic view. It's uh, it's not true to life because when you look at things, they, there's always going to be a bit of distortion because we have two eyes and we're seeing we're a composite image. So these uh, these images tend to look warped. Like for instance, this uh, this front end view does not look nearly as cool as the muscle car does because um, it's all flattened and, and uh, weirdly weirdly exaggerated. So, but this is how. Mathematically, everything is lined up. So we're going to use this as, as the closest reference possible. So uh, I've, matched, I've matched the side angles, and I, I feel pretty good about where the side orthographic is at. Now note that I did not go all the way to this outer edge, because I can tell from the, uh, 
the shape of the lines that this looks like it's bowing outwards. So what I'm going to do is I'll be adding edge loops down the center of the car and bowing it rather than um, matching the silhouette perfectly because I know that, or I can infer uh, from what I'm looking at right now that this uh, that this is not where the edge of the car is on the very uh, far end of the car. So uh, all I did here was just um, make one side, move it to the edge of the car in the orthographic, and then mirror it, and mirror and bridge it. So I'll be using mirror a lot. Um, bridging it now is just so I have some geometry to work with, and I can, I can show you a, uh, a, a full 3D representation of where the car will be. Um, but for now, it's, it's not entirely accurate. I'm not going to be working on both sides at the same time. I'm just going to be doing one side and then um, mirroring as, as I'm happy with the uh, progress. So we're going to stay in vert mode. Um, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to selectively grab large swaths of, of verts and, uh, and just kind of push them into place. And this gets messy really quickly. And it's kind of un unavoidable. But if you've, if you've uh, constructed everything in a proper, in a good grid, good loops, um, as you can see, uh, I have nice clean lines following the length of the car. I've kept everything mostly in quads. Um, it's not entirely necessary to keep them all in quads. Like, for instance, um, when you're doing things like this, you're, gonna, you're naturally going to end up with tries because in order to uh, get curves like that accurate, you're going you're gonna to have to exceed the rest of the car. And, but what's really important is um, uh, geometry density. So in these areas where there's um, a lot of cuts, I want to make sure that most of my tries and quads are about the same size to each other. There's areas like this, like this door, where it's okay for me to um, not have the grid be entirely um, be entirely one-to-one -one or like, entirely square. And that's because I know that um, there's not a lot of plane changes happening here. They're, they're just happening on the, uh, on the vertical or horizontal axis. Um, so I can leave that as just these long lines for now. But when, when we get into the complicated areas, I want to stay away as much as I can from these thin thin, uh, thin polygons and, st and try to keep everything in a fairly even grid. Another thing I've done um, that was not in the previous video was I, I put strips around all my curves because a very important thing when you're doing um, curving geometry um, is to make sure that the edge of your edge of whatever you're doing is um, is well, it's it's is quads. Um, not always quads, actually, because um, as you'll note uh, down here, I have uh, these are tries. But the thing is, uh, anything along the edge of whatever you're modeling should have only one um, only one edge connected to it. So without this, um, so for instance, I have this this grid ends on this vert. Without this uh, without this extra loop, this grid grid line would end on this this uh, vertex, and this one would end on this vertex. And so when we switch to um, when we switch to the high poly mode, we can see where the problem lies. So what this does is when there's more than one edge connecting to a vert, when you start to um, smooth things out, um, it tries to bow in the direction of both of these, and you don't get a perfectly smooth curve. Um, so you, when, you, when you have um, edges like this, you want to make sure that um, only one line goes to each vert. One, only one edge each goes to each vert. And if that means adding an extra little strip of geometry, then so be it. So that's on both ends of these. Make sure that lines like this, these converging uh, converging edges on one vert, if I have converging edges, I need to make sure that um, there's a buffer between that vert and the actual edge of the mesh. That's okay here because it goes one, 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 even and the converging vert happens here. So I'm going to smooth out these, continue in a smooth line, and the uh, the mess of uh, converging verts happens on the inside of mesh, where I have um, where where everything is more uniform, and it's uh, it's harder to tell where um, where um, your stuff is bending. In places where it's less of a problem are up here. Um, right here, I have converging verts, and you'll see that it's it's um, you're starting it at sharp edges because it's going to recognize that as a point. Um, and eventually, I'll be cleaning this up. And Adding, um, adding another strip of geometry, but for now, because this is a plane change in the car, and this is where the car naturally meets three, um, like three, three converging lines naturally meet on the car. I know this is going to be hard edge, and I know this is where um, where the car is going to have structural support for that, so it's okay. 
Um, but again, for anything curving, make sure that you only ever have one edge going to one bird at the edge of the mesh. Anyway, back to um, back to how I'm going to do this. I'm going to I'm not going to worry at all about how these lines um, about keeping these lines across the car straight because I'm going to end up mirroring this, and I know that the car bows in the center, so I'm going to be um, those aren't going to be straight by the end of this. What I'm going to do is um, just some big uh, drastic changes right up front. And I can do things like rotate and keep these. Uh, Mm, yeah, rotate. Keep these, uh, keep these kind of together. Follow the lines of the car. And so I'm going to be doing a lot of cross-referencing back in the 3D view. It wasn't as important when I was just working on one side, but when when the uh, faces start to stretch and I'm, and I'm selecting verts, I need to make sure that I'm selecting ones that make sense to go together, and um, you know, I'm not causing problems for the rest of the vehicle. So again, just selecting. Pushing and pulling. And it's a very it's a very long process uh, this part, but it, I know it's going to be accurate. I know that my geometry is not changing much, so I can go back and change things when I need to. And um, I'm in a good space to make um, make these kind of decisions. Now, where it gets complicated is where I can see that oh, this um, uh, the the canopy of the car is actually not where the body of the car ends. So I know I'm getting I'm going to end up needing to add geometry there. Um, so what I can do is I plan this. I plan ahead for this, and I said that I'm going to um, add some uh, add add another string of roots. So I'm going to move just these over to where the um, where the canopy starts, and I'll figure out how to bridge the rest of that later um, by adding an edge loop along here. Um, but we'll see. And I can assume that. Uh, these guys uh, meet the canopy as well. I can move that at the same time, following my edges, um, being careful uh, to make sure that all of the verts line up along this uh, this diagonal edge. And then we then we have some interesting ones. So back here, where I have to extrapolate a bit more, and I can I can assume based on the uh, based on the drawing that there's a slight slope, but it's not very drastic. It's not like a an hard canopy. So I'm going to make sure I have the right one selected. All right, and I'm going to figure out which uh, which words these are that are causing the most problems. Um, highlight these over here, and I can start to see um, where the problem is. So I'm going to I'm going to assume that based on based on multiple views. So this is the top of the door. It's a little too far out um, in the draw in the in the side view, and it's causing stretching. So I can assume that based on Based on the way the door line curves here, that uh, the door goes in, and it's not it's not a straight line. It doesn't end in a straight line. It, it goes up for a little while, and then it curves into the car to meet the canopy. Because I can assume that the window of the canopy is going to be flush. It's going to it's going to follow a nice straight line from here to here, and it's going to um, encompass this with a with a mostly flat, slightly curved plane. So I'm going to say the top of the door. Probably is it's curved a little bit, and it, comes, and it curves to meet the uh, meet the canopy. And this is what I mean by by using multiple views. I can make these kind of guesses, um, and then also by having my reference open, uh, which I closed for whatever reason. Pull that back up. By having multiple um, reference images open, I can make uh, assumptions. Educated guesses about how this how this car works. And you can see that yeah, the um, there's a flat plane on top of the door where it um, it curves inward to meet the canopy. So my guess was correct. But always have reference open because um, any one image there's lots of there's lots of issues with cameras. Um, like this is the same angle, basically the same angle of the car, but it's so warped. In one one camera because of the lens distortion. This one's a really um, flat lens that compresses the car. It's basically orthographic. So this would be this would be good modeling reference. And this would be good modeling reference because it compresses the car and brings it to almost like um, the level of this drawing. But um, same angle, same angle of the car. That purple one I was working with earlier. Um, 
it, it looks like a completely different car and a completely different silhouette um, just because just because of the length of the camera so pay attention to that I have lots and lots of images open because um, yeah you're, you're not going to be able to make any decisions from any one image now what I have here is a weird curve because I don't have enough geometry there so I know that in order to um, keep these lines straight and get rid of these these harsh diagonals I'm going to need to cut into the car in, so I grab my cut tool I'm going to follow the line that is already created by the door and, uh, based on the other reference I know that that line continues all the way down to the end of the car I'm just going to I'm just going to cut all the way across that those two the diagonals I'm just going to, I'm going to grab them move them into place And they're going to follow the line that I've already begun with where the, uh, where the door connects. And then looking at multiple angles, the, uh, the orthographic gets a little hazy at, this, at um, junctions like this because this is very much 3D information that I can't convey. That, um, that, an orth that a flat orthographic can't convey. So just use use multiple angles, and keep checking the reference, and keep uh, keep thinking about how this car works. And I'm going to check reference again because I, I need to know whether or not the uh, the rear of the car, how the rear of the car interacts. So yeah, so look at this. So flat plane that comes into a curve and ends in a dome. And the, the car itself actually can, uh, continues in a straight line rather than a, so it's like they, they slap this teardrop shape on top of a flat surface so I need to figure out how to um, emulate that within my model so I have this, this slope coming down coming straight down but what I know now from my reference is that that's not entirely correct so I'm going to grab this guy and move him about to the center because I'm going I'm to call this the end of the teardrop shape because it ends, and uh, no, it actually it goes all the way to the end of the car. So, uh, we'll move them about there, and I'll say that these, these other birds will be, uh, be my teardrop. Move that one all the way over, all the way over. And we'll start getting more graceful slope. It turns into the teardrop shape. That I need. Yeah, yeah, a lot of push and pull, a lot of looking at reference, a lot of um, a lot of making guesses. Unfortunately, um, we, we unless you like have the thing in front of you like, and manually taking measurements, you're going to be doing a lot of guesswork. So reference is key. Reference is king. Um, just keep pushing the ball. And don't, and again, like I'm not even gonna touch the other side because I know I know that my pivot is centered on the model. So whenever I'm ready to mirror this, I can mirror it and I'll have exact all this work that I've already done will copy directly over. So I'm not gonna waste my time. I'm not gonna be imprecise with how my um, with how my geometry is looking. I'm just going to do all my work here and copy it. Turn that off a little. I know, I know that the car is running and it doesn't end in a harsh shape like that. And now this geometry is a little weird, so um, what I need to do is I want to uh, I want to treat this like it's it's a shape that's been connected to another shape. Um, and what that means is generally adding more geometry, adding more um, adding more information to the model so it knows how to curve. Well, for instance, connecting these two. So what I have here is I have the canopy set on top of the car, tear dropping back and coming to a point at the tip, whereas the rest of the car continues in this graceful slope like a wedge. So the body of the car, wedge, 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 wedge follows all the way back to the round, whereas the teardrop sharply inserted here in a, in a three point intersection. And then uh, dribbles back into a real rounded off shape back here. And that feels pretty good. Um, so now I can move on to the 
on onto uh, Rosa Park. And this is, uh, it gets a bit easier for me, but we'll see. So again, I need to cross-reference where everything I'm selecting is. So I can see from these edges where the highest density is, and I can see where all the dense parts are. Um, but again, I need to be double-checking over here because I don't want to be selecting um, things that I don't want to move together. So let's start with that. These guys. And that should be okay. So this is going to be a lot of push and pull again. So move it all the way out to the edge. And you can see that yeah, it's it's going to start um, it's going to start stretching. So I need to make sure I'm doing I'm being careful with things like this, where I'm grabbing things at different heights from each other because that's going to look um, bad on the model because um, it's not going to follow the, the natural curve of the vehicle. It's going to just look like these these weird stepping stones. Um, so I need to be be careful and just be, uh, anytime I move something, I need to, need to uh, check on how it's affected the geometry around it. So in this case, I'm grabbing these guys after the fact and pulling them in. Pulling them in. And then I need to consider that um, this is why you need to keep the grid uh, reasonably the same size. Um, this step in the center here is causing me problems because um, I can move this line out to the edge of the car, and then I can move this line. Basically, I'm, yeah, they're basically in a line. I can move this out to the edge of the car, and suddenly there's there's this weird disconnect between um, this this part of the line and this part of the line because there's extra geometry on the inside. Now I need this because I need to make sure my curves are straight, but it's um, it's just things to consider. Um, always be double checking and making sure that when you're when you're moving your stuff, you're not um, you're not throwing it too far off of the uh, the flat path. Because if this was if this was a, a sheet of metal, uh, it would be flat between these, and I wouldn't have something like this or something like this. I just I need to be double checking because that's uh, it's really easy to screw things up there. This. And, you know, this line is now aligned properly, but these um, these two in the middle here you know, got left behind. Um, I don't know what the default um, hotkey is for X-ray mode, but it's hugely helpful when you're doing um, reference and with the graphics. So I went into the hotkey editor and set up. Um, Set up X-ray or toggle X-ray to Alt One. So anytime I press Alt One, I can really quickly shuffle between being able to see through the model and um, and having it be opaque. Uh, I recommend doing that even if you're not using uh, orthographic reference, just because like being able to see um, through your model and see how it, where your parts are hiding if you're um, if you have like stray stuff on the inside is really useful. So, uh, think about that. And then I'm looking at how this model, uh, car curves on the inside. And I'm going to move it to there. And drop that part. And keep going. And this is where I'm again going to be uh, coming back with, uh, with more cuts. Because I can see that because there's no grid line here, and this is a diagonal, um, I'll turn the X-ray. Um, I'm getting a nasty bruise where this part is further out. And then, then this edge is. So I'll come back with oops, go back with the cut tool and cut another grid line through there. And I can bring this edge back out and, uh, and stop the bruising from happening. Now this is something I do after the fact because I need to be able to make big um, geometry decisions without being bogged down by the number of verts that I'm having to move at any given time. So. Um, Make your big moves before you start adding uh, and cuts and fixing bruises. Back in X ray mode.
we are all pretty even. Just shove them in. Then be checking reference to see how far the car curves under the uh, under the chassis or under the uh, under the model. Now, what I can't see here is where the back ends, um, because the front is probably wider than the back, so I need to again, check reference, grab something like this, and see that, come on, see that the, the back is actually much, uh, much steeper curve than the front. I'm going to go back to that mode. Starting to look like a barracuda. Okay, so um, now that this is about at a place where I can say I'm reasonably happy with it. We'll go on to symmetry again. A mirror is a more accurate term. Delete as many uh, tries as possible. Make sure that I don't need them. And then in the mix of dividing messy, so um, stick with cubes when you can, or quads when you can, but um, don't feel obligated to delete all your tries if you, um, if you find that they're necessary to support the geometry, because they can be. And things like this, just, uh, just do a little cleanup. Get rid of unnecessary details. Yeah, it feels pretty good. All right, so um, let's go back to object mode and mirror. And that starts to look like a barracuda. Imagine that. Um, now I also have a top view, so I'll be using that as well. And let's switch over to this mode. Okay. Again, start to see like, yeah, this is where this is where the car bows. This is where the car um, doesn't necessarily follow the, um, the expected lines. And this will take a lot of push and pull again, um, a lot of guessing. This is probably the hardest um, view to visually make sense of, um, just because well, there's, there's not a lot of information. So. Gotta, gotta be smart, gotta think, and uh, not, not be too hasty with it. And a lot of what comes next is gonna be um, kind of inventing geometry and making, making just uh, adding stuff that. Supports my, supports my guesses. Alright. Uh, top. And then from the side as well, because uh, again, that bowing I mentioned is not going to be solely in the, uh, in the top, but it's going to go out in the sides as well.
And I'll figure out how to do cuts like this a little later. But for now, this is uh, this is feeling pretty good. Mm. A little bit more for the hood. Make sure that that is as bowed as the actual car. Again, paying attention from all angles. I'll do a lot of refinement and beveling later, but for now, I just want to make sure that the basic silhouette follows what I need it to. The underside of the car I'm not going to worry about because um, I know most of it will be cut away anyway when it comes time to do um, unite it with the chassis and do like the fake um, fake cover ups for where the um, where the uh, internals are hiding. Um, so that's mostly going to be um, just basically an inset and bake, but for now, you know, for now it doesn't need to be anything. Okay, so that's that's the silhouette of the car. Um, from here, it's going to be a lot of um, a lot of beveling, a lot of um, pinching, uh, making sure I have uh, control edges on the uh, on the edges that are going to be more distinct. So like this this edge that runs down the center. Again, I'm going to pay attention to where the um, where the reflections on the car are most compressed. So you'll see this this line seems to happen on uh, across all across all the views, no matter what the uh, what the environment is. So I know that there's like a, a pinch in the metal there. So I'm gonna add a pinch in the geometry. And this is a very crisp edge, so there'll be a pinch there in the geometry. So when I when I go ahead and subdivide, right now it just looks like a blob. But when I start to pinch uh, pinch and add, add uh, bevels on here, for instance. Okay. Now it starts to be a bit more, uh, a bit more true than well. So again, as as we've done before, um, make sure that you're saving your um, saving your low poly as you're working, because you don't want to. Um, yeah. Uh, yeah. So save your low poly as you're working. Or keep it as a mid poly. So add your chamfers, add your add your visual details that you need to. Um, but for the most part, um, you'll want you want both models so that you can um, duplicate it and have a high poly, but also um, not waste time when it comes time to uh, retopo. Because uh, with cars, they're very organic forms, even though they're made out of metal. So treat them like a treat them like a character model. Um, if you look up. Um, Car wireframe. Uh, you'll see that they're very grid-like, um, unlike unlike a lot of uh, like hard surface models and hard surface props. There's a lot of grid work, and really, when I when I get back to it, uh, when I get down to the, um, the high poly version, I'll probably be cutting the proper grid along this door to make sure that like this feels like a an organic flow. Even though it's even though it's made out of metal, even though it's a very hard surface, technically hard surface, the forms are still organic and they still need to be treated much like a character model would, where you have really even polygon distribution, so all your curves and all your all your edge flows make sense. Um, if you just drop like export a model, uh, I'll show you really quick. But if you just like uh, subdivide this, um, mesh smooth. And then let's see. export this car desktop. Um, if you have Marmoset, I recommend highly recommend doing this. Um, Azure High Poly comes along. Just drop your car into uh, into Marmoset. Um, this, go this um, drop the car into Marmoset and see how the reflections go. Like, grab a grab a basic material, or a default material, and drop it on your car. Turn the metalness up all the way, and um, maybe go to the sky on Marmoset. Um, grab your under sky presets. You have all these different um, like real life pictures that are surrounding the environment. So yeah, let me turn this off. 
uh, here on the sky, you can see like um, this is how Marmoset gets everything that looks so good. Is it, it places a real life image um, around your view, around your object, and then uses that for the uh, reflection information. So drop in, uh, drop in your vehicle. Um, pick a. I like late day field uh, generally uh, because it's it's a nice range of um, soft blues into in the dark colors. Um, and look at look at how the reflections on your car flow, and make sure that the geometry is flowing properly, um, because that that's how that's how real car designers work. It. They they, um, they take their car, and they're sculpting it. They usually work in like clay. This is where a lot of car designs start, and they're sculpting and thinking about how the uh, how the light is going to bounce off the model. So if you're if you're working on it, you can you can look from the beginning and say. I know how the light is working on my model, and I can match that to how the um, how the real car looks, and you're going to be in a really good spot. Cool. Well, have fun with that. Um, yeah. So next week's homework um, today is uh, November fifteenth. Next week you're going to be uh, finishing up the um, uh, shoot. What's it called? The undercarriage. Um, so high poly or high poly, low poly. Um, unwrapped and textured. I'm not expecting any real detailed texture, just like a simple, like, it's metal. And uh, and it's uh, probably going to be just like a slight off-white and metallic. So don't worry about that. Um, do your normal bakes, if you have any. Um, rivets are cool. Um, do some fun stuff there. But um, for the most part, it should be a pretty simple texture job, like a 512 by 512 pixels, so not a, not a huge one. Um, yeah, cool. Uh, so email me if you have any questions, and uh, have a good have a good week.